bring back our panel, Sam Cedar, Jillian Melchior, Christina Greer, and, and uh, Harry S Siegel. Uh, what do you think about the, the the way that this is all being interpreted overseas? Well, I, I'm not sure I believe in a friendly rattling. I think that's a hilarious turn of phrase. But I think, you know, Obama's right on this one. If you look at what Trump's record is, he's cozy with Putin. He said that Tiananmen Square was a show of leadership. He's talked about, you know, Kim Jong-un. At least you've got to admire him keeping the ranks in control. I think what we're seeing is that our Democratic allies are nervous, and rightly so. I mean, he's got working on his campaign, Manafort, who advised the Ukrainian dictator Yanukovych. I think Ukraine might be feeling a little nervous. You know, he's buddying up with the Chinese government. You've got Taiwan feeling nervous. I think they're absolutely right. This is a guy with dictatorial impulses that's too cozy to dictators. I don't like it either. Yeah, I mean, I share their concern, frankly. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, President Obama's doing what he can, at least, I think, you know, at least acknowledging it uh, makes our allies at least sort of aware that there is some concern here. Right. Like, I mean, it would be that much more concerning if they had some sense of, like, the entire country uh, seems to be buying into this notion. Right. And right. I think, you know, that is the, the, the sense that is, I think, there, there's, uh, uh, that is portrayed to a large extent. I mean, you know, how many times do we hear in the media people talking about the American public has come around on Donald Trump? And no, it's just the Republican Party did. Well, and that's, and that's, it, that's it, it, hopefully it doesn't go further, but uh, the, there's no evidence that it will. The thing to note in response to him saying the president, you know, the president's done a horrible job and, um, you know, I mean, it should be noted that this president right now is 53% approval rating. He's he's at the highest he's been in a very very long time. He's you know elected twice. Um, I, I think that there is a, there's a disconnect between how unpopular Donald Trump thinks Barack Obama is and how the American f people feel about Barack Obama. Well, Barack Obama has been a steward of American decline after the war as the president before him started. And he's been reasonably open without using that turn of phrase. That's very true. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and, and and Trump is saying there's no reason for decline. Let's just start winning again, right. and that'll deal with airport lines and pretty much everything else. And that's that's bad. And it terrifies world leaders. But for a lot of Americans who feel frustrated and like, what, what, why are we declining? Why are we losing? I think that's the message Trump, I guess, is trying to communicate. And I think a lot of Trump supporters have hated Barack Obama before he was yes, in this foreign yes. office, right? Yes. They said he was a failure before he even Or a secret Kenyan. I mean, that was, that was how he launched his career. Exactly. Uh, never mind that his mother's an right. American citizen right. if right. he understood the Constitution, right. and that also means he's a citizen, right. so it doesn't matter. Right. Right. But we're saying that, you know, he's speaking to his base constantly, but he is going to have to figure out how he... Uh, negotiates this this language of Obama's been an abject failure right. when you're looking at the vast majority of the country is like actually he hasn't been a failure. You know when well, I think about when I think about foreign leaders I think about Berlusconi because I think the closest analog you can get to a Trumpian figure abroad in, in the in the sort of developed world OECD world would be Silvio Berlusconi is a guy who was he was sort of brash in exactly the same way he was kind of macho in the same way he bragged about his sexual conquests in the same way he was he was actually legitimately extremely rich he was the richest person in all of Italy and also con controlled three of their television channels which helped quite a bit and I had a conversation recently with an Italian friend about this I said well you know he was he was really bad for Italy like that was not a good period of time for Italy, but Italy survived. He said, yeah, but Italy wasn't the most powerful country in the world. Right. Like, this was him saying this back to me, like, yeah, we survived, and it was bad, but it matters a lot more right. Berlusconi running the United States of America. Like, you guys are still the cornerstone linchpin of the international order, like it or not. I think that's right. And I think a lot of Trump supporters, in all fairness, have taken fair objection with Obama's foreign policy. I mean, I think they're getting the sense that you can't point to a place in the world that's safer since Obama took office now. And I think that's a problem. I mean, you've got the red line, you've got Russia acting very aggressive in Ukraine, and us taking a very kind of weak response to that. I, I think their critique critique is fair, but that doesn't mean Donald Trump well, is no, the but, but, No, but I actually think the critique, the critique, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the point that Harry made there is important, right? Because the critique on the other side is strength. And the critique of strength means, like, maybe we went to war in Syria. Maybe we actually put, I, mean, I, I say this as we literally have pictures of American Special Forces today wearing YPG patches uh -huh. uh, in, an, in an operation outside Raqqa in Syria. So we have American servicemen in Syria right now who are facing possible death, right? Their, their, their bodies are on the line. That said, 
part of the difficulty, I think, of defending the Obama foreign policy in a political context is precisely the counterfactual that didn't happen, right? So you can say, well, look at everything's a mess, right? Well, what would have been on the other side? And you have all these great examples, right? In Syria, we didn't invade, and it's a mess. In Libya, we bombed, and it's a mess. In Iraq, we invaded all the way, and it's a mess. All right. So. <laughs> Don't forget yeah. about Afghanistan. Right, I mean, of course. Yeah. I will say one thing that really changed my mind was actually going to Iraq, talking to Kurdish people that had been subject to chemical attacks and having them talk about how sad they were about an American retreat. That really changed my mind. I think that narrative is coming out more and more if you look well, at what's yeah, happening. Yeah, so the, the, I, I think that's true. The Kurds, I think, the Kurds I, I, also I, I, wanted I, I, us to go attack yeah, I think Hussein that's true. In 2003. The Kurds. I think there's literally two or three hundred thousand less Iraqis for you to run into and talk to about that right. because they're dead because Many of our Christian. invasion. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Perhaps Christian, I, 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 right. I, I don't care what their religion was, we were responsible for their deaths as a country. I mean, so the idea that somehow the world is less stable now uh, than it was from what happened eight years uh, pr uh, prior is, um, is it, it, frankly, I think it's, it's sort of lunacy. Now, I, I don't deny that there are people in the Republican Party and perhaps uh, in, in the other parties that, that feel differently. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is, we had eight years of massive destabilization of our alliances and... But yeah. regime change is the Clinton point, if we're going to go back far enough. Well, but he didn't actually pursue it. I mean, there's an Iraq Liberation Act in 1998. But let me just say this as sort of a unifying point here, is that I think it is the case that the world is extremely unstable right now and feels unstable, right? And the question is, how do you deal with that instability? And, and is that and, Barack Obama's And would fault? Trump improve... Exactly. <laughs> is it Barack Obama's fault? And would Trump be a net improvement on stability, which I think is a, is a difficult uh, thing to sell. At the Trump 